Welcome to our session today. It's a huge pleasure and honor to have all of you with us. Uh, before we start, uh, I was invited to uh, uh, just open up the space with a poem. Uh, so in COVID, I published a book of poems that I had been writing over 10 years. And I work with children and young people in India. So I thought I could probably bring in something uh, from my experience with children. Uh, so this poem is called Dilip. Uh, which is a Hindi word for the king. And this was a young man that I met at art camp that we run in my organization. And it is it captures a four-day journey of his transformation. Uh, I'm going to start with that. Uh, quiet were his steps, invisible almost. Color to paper is all he desired gasped with joy when he found sketches crayons paints laid out in invitation beckoning him to flare his imagination silently he began every waking hour a palace he imagined bringing it alive hue by hue not a word he spoke all of day one disappearing in breaks to his still world filled with color day two we noticed when meals he missed consumed as he was by his art, feverish in his endeavor, adding layers of depth to his thriving imagination. He brought it to life color by color, blacks, reds, and blues, in stressed richness, adding dimensions in mysterious ways. Not a word he spoke amongst 40 others, a craftsman he was still in his heart. As colors emerged, so did he. We saw the shift, certain and real, from flirtive eyes to steadfast gaze, from fidgety hands to firm strokes, from drooped shoulders to arched back, from established frowns to almost smiles. As his art came alive, he came alive. Feverish in his space, he slept little as day three dawned. He knew his time had come. Quietly he walked, still he gazed, as 40 pairs washed with bated breath. Art I love day and night, yet colors not have I at home or school. Colors I see, colors I seek, even in the drab of my spaces. To heaven you brought me, let me be. You saw me even as I am, hidden from me. Accept my frailties with grace you did. Here I am with grace I say, thank you. With that, he unfurled a fantasy palace, brought alive, befriended with colors that danced on paper under his able command. In that moment, his eyes shone bright, having found their light from within his heart. Steadfast and sure, they made home to shine bright forevermore, never again to be shut again. A journey just begun, for in art, Dilip, the king, had found himself only himself, truly himself. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. I'll hand it over to Lucette. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Vishal. Um, hi, all. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I am just touched and inspired by this poem that really oh, inspired the work that I actually do in the world. So thank you for that gift. Um, I want to just welcome you all into our session. As you know, this is the art of weaving system change uh, from vision to implementation. Our hope really is to have a session where we highlight, you know, weaving. How it, what is it? How is it that it creates impact and creates systems change? And how do we do so through collaboration and ecosystem activation? And most importantly, strengthening our relationships and, and the trust within our eco social ecosystem. So today we have uh, Vishal Talreja, and we also have Juanita Naranjo, myself, Lucette Jaimes. And the flow that we'd like to propose here is that um, after this introduction is over, we'll go over some connecting space through breakouts in pairs, then we're gonna spend some time together looking at what's weaving and, um, and how does weaving create impact. And then each of us will share some of the stories in our own weaving from the point of view of our uh, 
perspectives of uh, our work in our organizations. And then we'll open up for uh, questions and answers and hopefully we'll have a, clo a good closing on time. And so with that, I'm gonna get us started. And I'm gonna just uh, quickly say that uh, I'm joining from the co-creative organization and that I'm really excited to be here. And a dream I have, and the reason why I do weaving is that I really hope that in our world, we can all coexist and thrive together, humans and non-humans. That's why I'm here. With that, I'm gonna pass it to Vishal to introduce himself and we'll continue. Vishal, over to you. Thank you, Luzet. Uh, hello again, my name is Vishal. I'm calling in from Bangalore, which is a city in India. Uh, I represent an organization called Dream a Dream that I co-founded 25 years back uh, that works with children and young people in India. Uh, one vision I have for the world is if every young person can find their own unique journeys to thriving uh, and through their own thriving, if they can create the environments that we need for our societies and our planet to thrive. Uh, thank you. I'm going to hand it over to Yonita. Thank you, Vishal, and thank you, Lucette, and thank you, everyone, for being here. My name is Juanita Naranjo. I'm part of Fundación Mi Sangre, which is an organization in Medellín, Colombia. Uh, we are an organization of more than 18 years working with young people and uh, kids here in Colombia, stressing their social abilities and social skills and driving systemic change for a more peaceful, democratic, and gener generative society. Uh, I will talk a little bit more about what we do later, but I am a true believer in the in positive change and the power of weaving. So thank you very much for being here and we'll talk a, bit, a little bit more later. Wonderful. And so with our instruction, our introductions, uh, we want to pass into some connecting and Juanita are gonna, is going to lead us into some of our breakouts. So Juanita, over to you. Thank you so much, Lucette. So um, I will invite you all to take a little bit of time to breathe, to be here, to be present, uh, to leave whatever you were doing before behind. If you are in the street, try to focus, try to be in a place or a, bit, or a, of a little bit of calm, a little bit of silence and prepare yourself to share and to listen actively. And listening actively means not listening to respond, not listening to question. Open your heart and open your mind and prepare yourself to share with others. So we're gonna go into pairs and I will ask you to please reflect on this question. What weaving experiences have shaped who you are? Not only during your work, not only in your personal life, and in, in, in all the aspects in your life, what weaving experience have shaped who you are? Think about that for a second. And then we will go into breakout rooms. There will be two people in there. You will have, each will have three minutes to talk to answer to this question. You will share with that uh, other person your story and the other one will not interrupt, will not ask questions, just listen. Then you will switch. Each of you will have these three minutes, try to um, count the time with your phone or whatever you have. Um, and then after both have spoken, you will have three minutes to share your feelings, observations, ask questions if you have, um, and then we will come back. So try to follow these instructions very well. This is called in Miss Angre, the walking dialogue. You might not be walking, but you will be hearing uh, and listening to the other person with your heart and mind open. So please, Komi or Hira help us uh, going into breakout rooms and uh, we'll be here if you have any questions. Hi everyone. I hope um, these couple of minutes that you had to speak to each other 
was insightful and you got the chance to get to know a little bit better who the other person is and maybe find out a little bit more about yourself. Um, this is a question that you don't ask yourself much. So I hope it was uh, useful and helpful and insightful uh, to start this conversation. So I will, I, I want to give the chance to a couple of people to share um, the experience that you hear, 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 heard from uh, your partner in the groups. So does anyone want to share? I can point names. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, Masika. Yes, I'm Masika, and um, I'm from Kasese, Uganda. And uh, I listened to what uh, Osman was, uh, what she was talking. She said that uh, she is in, she, she joined, she joined uh, medicine or medical department because she, it wasn't an option. Like they, like there wasn't an option for her to join. And uh, what she, 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 she began having mental issues because she, it wasn't her field to join. So uh during that time she realized that uh, she, she founded an organization and um uh, after after knowing that people are going through mental issues and she's now living in the she, she comes from sudan and she now lives in the united emirates thank you that's what i captured thank you so much for sharing masaki um masika sorry um who else want to share and just to just to support uh, your sharing we're inviting uh, just to hear from you if anything touched you or if anything is staying with you after spending three entire minutes listening to another human being without having to ask anything just whatever is with you at the moment. It's not a recap of what you all spoke about. If there's any. Okay, I was seeing if, if there were others that wanted Hello. to participate. Oh, there's Jess. <laughs> Jess, do you want to go? Okay. So I was with uh, Modupe in our breakout room and she was talking about how she truly feels like um, the weaving mission and with a specific aspect on mental health and how her experience, uh, her personal experience helped her shape and find this like mission, this like true vocation that she has and how she acts and is in the world, how she expresses herself, how she's also there creating awareness on mental health. And that that is her way of contributing. I resonated a lot with that because for me, the always the anchor in my life has to do with community. For me, a life without a community is not a life because community is honestly the place where we can genuinely be our true authentic selves. And of course, as I, I told her that in my personal experience, I only came to realize the importance of mental health as I grew older. So it's not something that was present for me at the beginning of my life. But as I grew older and started like interacting in other spaces, I came to realize how important it is and how it is connected also with the community and how we are and how we can cope. Uh, together and that it's not only an individual and personal aspect but it's like a community aspect for me so that's a little bit about what we shared and the last detail was that it was amazing because she's with her granddaughter and she still manages to do everything it's a tiny little girl like this so that was also lovely and you can see Anna oh there she is oh hello yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mary, for sharing. <laughs> okay. That's beautiful. Um, so back to thank Lucette, you. I think. Thank, thank you, you so thank much you. for sharing. That's very inspiring and beautiful. We have somebody else, Bara, and then we can move ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Bara. Thank you. So I had the uh, opportunity to listen to Masika who said earlier. So uh, she, uh, you know, uh, is a single mother, you know, a uh, partner left uh, the family and the stress that she was going through and the depression that she went, uh, went through, uh, you know, it was uh, very overwhelming for me to listen. And she turned that depression and stress, uh, the anxiety of raising kids and also being in the society uh, in a positive way. She used all the, you know, lived experiences to, you know, start an organization to support women who, you know, go through such uh, depression and anxiety of, you know, raising kids and supporting each other. So that was really touching and inspiring to me. I'm grateful for, you know, that sharing. Yeah. Thank you, Masi. Thank you so much, Bara, for sharing. Um, your, I, I didn't get the name, I'm sorry, but your partner's um, um, story, which is also very inspiring. A lot of you are working in mental health uh, and it's really interesting to understand how weaving um, can really impact and benefit uh, each other' um, mental health. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute <laughs> from different experiences from Lizette, Vishal, and myself. And also we want to jump um, into continue uh, talking and understanding how you all understand weaving. So Lucy, back to you. Thank you. And thank you all for your sharing. That That's what makes this dialogue important. Please keep it, keep sharing. The chat is open. Uh, we're going to go now into a Mentimeter exercise where we all are going to share what we are, uh, what comes to mind when we are thinking about weaving systems change. What comes to your mind when thinking about weaving systems change? And so um, we have, I think we have a link and perhaps we can put it in the chat too. Or uh, Komi, if you wanna explain how to access the, the Mentimeter, that would be great. I think here are already dropped in the chats. So Okay, you, great. You, ah, you, wonderful, you. yes, I hadn't seen it. Thanks. So we just have to go to the link and use a code or access just the link that it has is also there and just answer the question. Wonderful. So we can see our different answers. We have so far 40 different responses and we'll continue changing uh, depending on uh, how many answers we keep adding. But we can see big words like trust, listening, collaboration, community, communities, collective movements, inside out, building confidence, finding common grounds, time consuming indeed. United, changing mental model, long lasting change, outcome of impact, generosity, 
time consuming. Mindset shift, inner and outer partnerships. So this is lovely. It's lovely to see how our collective wisdom gets together in this cloud of answers and see how trust keep being at the middle, in the middle, together with collaboration, community, and listening, which are uh, qualities that, in my experience, are connected to women. Thank you, Komi, for sharing that. So I want to uh, share a little bit about uh, weaving. So I, I got engaged with uh, the weaving lab, uh, uh, Vishal and, and a group of uh, friends got together and we started this conversation around weaving lab and the important to have like a community of people who could learn together how to interconnect with other people, our projects, places, and how to cultivate thriving systems. And, you know, parts of the conversations uh, were naming weaving as a practice of cultivating relationships that were trusting, that had purpose, that were synergistic, that, uh, that allows us to kind of like align collective movements towards particularly planetary well-being and that um, included a lot of collaboration, alignment, learning, and with a, with a systems view of it. So it was more like around a style of leadership that focused on creating collaborations to, to have positive impact. Um, and so with that, I would like to hear maybe a couple of voices uh, uh, on what, what is weaving for you and what what taught you from seeing the cloud of definitions that we all share together? Whoever wants to go, please unmute and share. Can I come? Yeah, please. Okay. Go ahead, Malupe. Well, okay, just shortly, uh, briefly. Um, weaving to me, it's um, when we talk about um, fixing issues in our communities as per humanity, um, collectively, you know, coming together, collaborating. I see um, different um, organizations with different teams and expertise coming together in various communities to impact the lives of members of the community. And I always say it that the right foundation, which without we cannot achieve anything, is mental health. We first have to deal with the mental health of the people in the community that we are working with and um, make them think positively to have a rethink of how they, they take issues in the past. You know, it's like, um, Changing our mental, um, mental way of our mentality of the old ways, and then innovating, finding ways of inno innovating on what we already have. I think uh, we can all come together and work together in partnership and um, collaboration to achieve the social impact which we all desire. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Malupe, for that sharing. Um, in, in my own experience, you know, when you talk about mental health, I, I, it takes me to different places when it's kind of like, uh, our mindsets, our mental models, as well as our, um, the health, the healthy way of, uh, in which our minds can work that, that help us be, uh, in function. And I'm not saying that it's, what I'm, I'm not saying that I always want to be in a mental state that makes me happy. Not, not, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that can I be even with pain when and still be able to be in that um, feel that I am in that function. And so what you are saying is, is so important because the past decade of my work has been really focused on how do we as change makers and weavers are aware of our inner world of what's happening in our mental health, in our in our well-being, 
and how that translates in our system change, for example. So thank you so much for, for that comment. Um, anyone else would like to share? We have a few more minutes to hear from you. What's waiting for you or an experience that you would like to share? So here, Dr. Jelena Haines. Weaving is creating a space for dialogue mutually and respectfully with the understanding of individual health and well being. And weaving system link is a concept or notion that every knowledge are interconnected and viewed as holistic. And it's 1 a.m. for a hair in Australia. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Haynes. Any other comments or reactions around weaving? All right. Cool, we can, we can continue our conversation later on. For now then, uh, I'm gonna pass over to Vishal to get us into his world and definitions of weaving uh, with some examples. Vishal, over to you. Thank you, uh, Lizette. Uh, thank you everyone for sharing uh, so much authenticity. Uh, uh, so let me start off by talking about the approach that Dream a Dream takes. Uh, and, uh, if you could move to the next slide, I think. Uh, so Dreamy Dream is a 25-year-old organization that works with young people. Uh, like many organizations that work with children and young people, we started by directly working with them. So we, we would run community centers, after-school centers, and then we started working with uh, children and young people in schools, in public schools. Uh, so a lot of our direct impact work uh, which continues to now run for 25 years, uh, is directly working with young people. Uh, in due course, this became our innovation lab. This is where we were bringing in new pedagogical approaches, new content, new curriculum, new facilitator strategies, uh, bringing in uh, research from across the globe. Uh, so this was very high quality work and here, our goal was to build insights about young people, the challenges that they're facing and what's working for them, uh, but also use this as a space to keep ourselves grounded for us to continue to listen. Uh, as we built insights, we said now we could take this insight into public education systems, so which led to our work in systems demonstration. So today across India, we work in seven states uh, in partnership with state governments, uh, departments of education, where we bring in curriculum, pedagogical uh, inputs, assessment frameworks and strategies and teacher training as an approach to shift public education systems. Uh, but even with this, we realized that uh, as an organization, we are obviously going to create one minimal impact. So what we needed to do was build an ecosystem. Uh, and to build the ecosystem, we needed to start building the field. Uh, at the first level, it was about how do we mainstream the idea of the criticality of life skills and social emotional learning into the larger ecosystem of education players. It took us 18 years to get to a place where we felt life skills and social emotional learning has today become as important as numeracy and literacy for all children across education. Uh, but then the question started asking about life skills leading to what? So one was life skills for life skills sake that every child at whatever age they're at need life skills to be able to thrive at that age, but also life skills to help them thrive uh, in the future. Uh, now, if we needed to see that, we realize our current education system, which is linear and industrial extractive model is only working for the top 10%. Now, how do we make sure the education system works for 100% of our kids? So that meant we needed to shift the core purpose of education from academic uh, success and economic outcomes to the idea of thriving, which is a much more expanded idea. So this is where the idea of weaving started taking seed. That we said, okay, we have to take our ideas outside of the organization, let go of our own agenda and start bringing in players from across the ecosystem, from the fields of creativity, from 
corporate employers, from teachers to young people to parents to media uh, to people who who are shaping the narratives uh, in the country, uh, people who are future thinkers. How do we bring them in and start exploring this idea of what does purpose of education for the present and future look like? Uh, and that's where the weaving process started for us. Uh, so it was about weaving in people, weaving in places, weaving in voices, weaving in ideas, uh, and building to create a shared purpose shared purpose around what is the purpose of education and what is the success from education for every child, uh, which led us to then become part of multiple collaboratives, uh, one of them being the Life Skills Collaborative and another one being Karanga. The Life Skills Collaborative uh, is is uh, India-based collaborative. It's a collaborative of life skills organization that's been running for four years now. Uh, and collectively, the collaborative impacts about 10 to 12 million kids across the country. Uh, the Karanga is a global alliance for life skills and social emotional learning that was set up in 2018, which is really a space for any organization, individual, researcher, academician, young person invested in the idea of life skills and social emotional learning to be part of Karanga. And it creates a space for mutual learning, sharing, partnerships, collaboration. Uh, there were a set of insights that we developed from our own weaving experience of building the field in India and being part of these collaboratives, which I could move on to the next slide. So these are some of the insights that have come. Now, weaving systems change through a collaborative approach we realize is not an easy uh, process. Uh, very early on, one is a recognition that many of us are products of an education system that has ingrained competitiveness in us. So we actually don't know how to collaborate. And if we had to now move into collaborative spaces, we had to first unlearn the competitiveness that has been nurtured into us because of our education system and the way societies are shaped. Second was that uh, Listening, but listening, really asking the question of where am I listening from and who, I, who, am, I, who am I listening to? Am I listening to my own echo chambers? Am I listening to a very homogeneous group? Am I listening to people who come with similar identities as mine uh, based on their race, caste, class, religion, color? Or am I opening up and listening to voices that are different from mine? When I'm listening, am I listening from a space of uh, having a ready response? reacting or am I listening from a space of empathy, curiosity, listening from a space of challenging my own ideas, challenging my own belief systems? So where am I listening from? Trust. A lot of people spoke about trust and listening. In trust, and this is the most difficult in our collaborative spaces, intellectually we all want to collaborate. We believe collaboration is good and collaborating towards us action helps the cause. But do we really know how to trust? As someone brings up an idea, am I sitting at, uh, in that space? And in my thoughts, am I already challenging that idea? In my thoughts, am I already rejecting that idea? In my thoughts, am I already coming with preconceived stereotypes about that individual or the organization that they run saying, hey, they're not a good organization. I know they don't create impact. Am I able to let go of that voice and come in from a lens of trust? One of the big insights that we had was weaving in collaborations is not so much about getting to an end point. It's a lot more about learning to walk together. And learning to walk together is, is a very powerful metaphor because that means I am embracing diversity, embracing equity, I'm embracing inclusion, and I'm saying whatever pace it takes, as long as all of us are able to walk together, we will be able to create change in our society and we'll be able to create space for everyone to thrive. Weaving is also an inside out journey. How am I showing up? Am I showing up with my own belief systems? Uh, am I showing up with my own narratives, uh, which are no longer working? There's, these narratives and belief systems might have worked for me as an individual, might have worked for me in running of the organization, but will they still work for me when I'm collaborating? when I'm in these ecosystemic spaces. 
am I willing to do the work inside of me to challenge my own narratives, my own story, my own belief systems, and let go of some of them that are not serving the collaborative? Whose voice is missing? You know, many a times yeah. we see as we are weaving collaboratives, there are many voices that are missing. Uh, and we come up with justifications of why those voices are missing. But at least are we becoming aware and finding ways to include those voices? Weaving at the core of is about embracing equity. And it's about recognizing that equity takes time. It takes mind space. It's an intentional investment that I'm doing. Uh, and it takes effort. And it's important to acknowledge that and embrace that and allow for that to happen. Uh, when we are looking at weaving through a collaborative approach, we can't look at one-year goals. We can't look at three-year goals. We have to look at a 10-year horizon because we're trying to shift norms. We're trying to shift mindsets. We're trying to shift the way society operates. Uh, so we have to have a long-term outlook. Of course, we can have short-term and mid-term goals, but the vision has to be societal shift, which takes 10 to 30 years in, in many cases. And of course, a big piece of the learning is that when we are bringing in us as funders in weaving ecosystems, we have to bring them in as co-creators, but also recognizing that you have to support this process for a long period of time. Don't come in with a one-year, three-year horizon because you'll not see that change. These are some of the insights that we've learned. And as I was listening to some of the people who spoke earlier, one of the things that came up for me is also that weaving is non-linear. It's, it's not that you do one step, then second, then third, and it moves forward. Weaving is messy. You take two steps forward, one step back. You take two steps forward, one step back. So it's an intentional, conscious investment in the hope that collaboration will create to societal change. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. That's so rich. Oh, my gosh, thanks. Um, all right, so I want to walk you through, um, through some story from the co-creative side where, um, uh, I work with. So can you please share the next slide? Thank you. So co-creative is a consultancy working with collaboration for systems change, and we help people uh, we usually see our work as helping people who don't know each other and perhaps don't even like each other sometimes to come together and look for shared intentions and creation of better futures together. And also in doing so, solving really tough problems that are uh, social, economical, et cetera. We work across several sectors, industries like food, energy, finance, education, yeah. environment, health, among others. And um, for us, it's really important in our weaving to leverage the wisdom of diversity and the power of shared intent. Um, and that's how we start designing um, multi what we call multi-stakeholder collaborations that, you know, as Vishal mentioned, are multi-year. The, the, this is never a six-month project. This is almost like, I, I see it sometimes, like, like a lifetime commitment to see and embody the future, the futures that we want to see. And so um, if you can, uh, actually, in, in this space, um, I want to just share uh, we there are many approaches to systems transformation, as you can see here in the slide that that we're sharing, and it's really important for for me to name this because I'm not saying that the weaving lab or the network weaver or that co-creative is the way to go. There are many ways to do stuff, and I particularly prefer weaving <laughs> and connecting people and collaborating in doing this work. And I'm highlighting here two of the spaces where I see that weaving happening a lot. Also with the Presencing Institute, I've seen a lot of weaving happening in their um, ecosystem program, uh, ecosystem leadership programs, for example. Can you share the next slide, please? So in our approach in, in the co-creative world, um, you, what we do is we start looking at the 
the topic or the area or like the intention that is emerging around solving a particular problem or creating a different system. And we start weaving change systems. And for us, those are networks of people who are aligned around a shared purpose, connected in trusting relationships, and also learning deeply together and making things together, prototyping things together, trying things together to see whether it works or not. Because it might not work, but then if we have enough trust among ourselves and, and practices that allows us to accommodate and to be agile when we get feedback around what, whether what we're doing is working or not, if we can act on it and change what we're doing, then that's really helpful. And these change systems that, that we uh, cultivate are usually drawn from the larger system that we're working with. And so it really is made up of the people who have a high stake in that larger system that is highly impacted by lar that larger system. And, um, and I think that, and, and we know that, that those change systems are uh, more powerful when we are able to invite as, mu as much diversity as possible in that creation. Um, and so for us, in, in making an emphasis of, for example, when we're looking for who should be part of this, of this system, of this change system, we don't want to make, for example, an open invitation to everyone, <laughs> because usually when I do an open invitation, usually the usual suspects will come that know me and feel safe with me and feel comfortable. No, I need to make an effort to understand what is the system, what's happening, who are the ones who haven't been invited. Who are the ones who might be most impacted by the system and not even having a seat on the table? Those are the people I need to go and interview and invite and engage. And they are the ones who need to be part of creating the solutions, not somebody else. So that's important for us. I'm going to share an example, if you, if you don't mind moving to the next slide. This is an example uh, of... Um, a collaborative that uh, we, ha we have helped cultivate. This is happening in Hawaii, in the United States. The uh, collaborative's name is Nakama Haloa. And as you can see here, it, it really started with a small group of people who had a dream um, that then intentionally invited a, a larger group of people from the system that they were looking into. And what, I'm, what we were looking into here is these, these people wanted to change the foster care system in Hawaii and the experience of the, ch of the children who were being hurt actually in that system. So we got together, we started looking at the hopes, at the dreams. We interviewed lots of people that are part of that system. And we together as a group started understanding the system, making sense of that system, adding comments from our own experiences or from, actually from their own experiences of what's happening in this system for them. And together we created a map there to have, okay, what, what is happening? And then to start observing, what do we really as a group care about that we could address and, and see um, how we can change? Can you move to the next uh, slide, please? And so together here in the, in the slides that I have, we started, started looking at what are the critical shifts that we could together start looking at what are the ideas that we have to make those shifts happen? And how do we conceptualize that and prototype it and start trying, you know, trying solutions together. And so in that space, what I really um, saw throughout, what we have seen throughout the years is that, you know, this small group of people that started something with a big dream that were intentionally about inviting people from all the system that were diverse, that had a stake in the system, and that uh, little by little started to have processes to be able to strengthen the relationship and to most importantly, have a purpose together, um, has evolved. This, this has grown and evolved. So when they started, they said, okay, by the year 2023, each native Hawaiian child and youth between zero and 26 years old affected by the foster care system is connected to and can sustain a lasting network of healthy, supportive, and enriching relationships. And this 
has been happening. These, these, these things have, have evolved and they've been able to really impact um, the work. And with time, because this is multi-year, and once you have certain achievements, you get into, okay, what else can be enhanced? Their purpose evolved. And then they said, you know what? We actually want to reinvent the child welfare system in the state of Hawaii. And we want it to be grounded in our community and native Hawaiian values and practices. And so this change system that started informally with a small group of people that then later engaged the rest of the stakeholders of, the, of that system actually was recently appointed by the state legislature to be a task force for the state to do the goal that they have. So you see how these change systems can also become a more formal part of a larger change system in this case with the support of the government. So this is a case that is happening locally in a state in the United States. Like this, we also have at the national level, at the global level. And what I wanna say, one of the reasons I decided to share a local case is because right now in the United States with our current political situation and the larger dynamics that, that are happening, the local communities, the state, the state ecosystems are really needing to work hard into becoming those change systems uh, because of the context that we are, and the difficulties we have in really taking care of those who are mostly affected by intentionally decide oppressive systems. So um, I'm gonna stop here, like if you don't mind, if you can stop sharing, because I would like just to share some insights, but without a slide so I can see people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a few things I, I like to add here. When we do collaborations, these they take multi-year. So we need funders, for example, that are committed and that participating in the conversations, knowing that they aren't part of that system that we that that it needs to change they're kind of like outside the system and they are influencing it with their money <laughs> so we want to change that role and we want to say okay you are partnering you you can have a role you can have a role convening for example you can have a role um helping us fund things that otherwise wouldn't we, we wouldn't be able to fund um helping us create a structures uh, where we ourselves part of the system um come together to make the decisions together and not to deliver something that is more like a like a project deliverable for six months. So that's that's a big thing. The role of funders, the multi-year, the very needed diversity. If it is not diverse, it's just not gonna work well. And it um, we use something, we use patterns. So throughout the 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 journey, there are moments where as a group we might feel confused. We might feel like, ah, this is not moving. Or we might feel like this is so overwhelming that we don't know what to do. So holding processes where we know and we name these things, and then we know that together we can overcome those moments of confusion because things are really complex is really important. And I think that last thing that I will say is that this really requires commitment from all the parties engaged because it's not something like a job that you do nine to five and you deliver something. It's something that you're becoming because that change system, that network becomes, embodies the system that they wanna see in, in the future. So with that, I'm gonna close and I'm gonna pass it over to Juanita to listen. Thank you so much, Lucette. Um, that was brilliant, especially how you ended. So. Um, I will share with you all uh, a little bit about Fundación Mi Sangre, which is the organization that I work in uh, with, well, before, uh, the previous slide, please. So uh, to start, I mentioned it before, but to remember, we are a nonprofit organization that drives systemic change for a more peaceful, democratic, and regenerative society. And at Fundación Mi Sangre, we understand that systemic change can only be achieved in recognizing the complexity of an issue. And we uh, have specific uh, topics of social problems that we like to tackle, 
uh, which are peace building, because in Colombia, uh, you may know that we have a long history of internal conflict and uh, standing war with many uh, armed groups. Uh, but also we work with mental health, inclusion and diversity, where we have um, issues uh, related to women, to immigrants, to LGBTQ communities. Um, we also tackle environmental issues, or as we call it, the relationship between humans and uh, nature. Um, so we have a range of social problems that we tackle. Uh, and to uh, work towards that, we work especially with young people and with um, uh, kids and children, um, but we develop an intersectional approach to address these challenges. So on an individual level, we train leaders who have demonstrated community-wide range uh, change. Um, on a community level, we connect leaders and organizations and individuals to build trust and encourage collaborations. And at a structural level, we leverage progress and best practices to promote advocacy and policy change. This multidimensional model is applied where it matters the most for us, which is in different environments, such as school, communities, and local governments. So we can pass on, on the next slide. And when we say that we, um, so in Fundación Mi Sangre, the conscious and weaving leadership is present in all of the work that we do. Um, and I want to mention this because it really illustrates how we understand it. In Fundación Mi Sangre, for example, we do not speak about project managers, we talk about weavers. Uh, so everyone in Fundación Mi Sangre that works directly with communities are weavers. And we understand this conscious and weaving leadership as follows. So conscious, conscious means acting from a deep connection with others, with oneself others and the environment. And we believe that change is possible if we change internally. We believe in internal change for external, ch exter external change. And that requires a strengthening of our social skills. And Lucette was mentioning before, for example, trust, um, empathy, uh, the ability to have critical thinking or assertive communication, flexibility, all of these skills are strengthened uh, in all of the ecosystems where we work on because we believe that it is mandatory and necessary that we relate to each other in a conscious way. And within involves interacting ideas, interlace, interlacing ideas, uh, sectors and resources, fostering collaboration among diverse individuals and teams, and managing conflicts with empathy, as I was saying before, and harness diversity as a source of innovation and systemic solutions. Well, uh, what, what, what we mean by that is that we understand weaving not only as collaboration or partnering with others, we believe in weaving as a more deep, um, profound way of understanding social problems and understanding human dynamics and relationships in a way that you connect with each other, you build trust, you understand not only their position of the organization or, or the institution that they represent, but you connect as humans and you really do create trust and promote collaboration, not only in, in an economic way, but to really uh, build over the, the capacities and the um, uh, abilities of each other. So I wanna share with you an example. We, uh, in, in Fundación Mi Sangre, developed me uh, different methodologies that we uh, implement in the different ecosystems that I just mentioned. Uh, and in the larger ecosystem, which, which is the, multi-sectoral uh, ecosystem where we work on, we develop this methodology that is called Unir para Construir, which is like you need to build. Um, and in this methodological framework um, promotes dialogue, learning, and co-creation among diverse actors around a common challenge. Uh, these draw inspiration from collaborative innovations and ecosystem within tools as, um, um, theory U, for example, co-creative, the weaving lab, and etc. 
And uh, we have implemented this methodology in different communities across the country, uh, in different levels, only in the small communities or in wider uh, ecosystems. And I want to give you an example of what we do and what we have accomplished within through this methodology. So in, uh, in the next slide, um, we had a project uh, a couple of years ago uh, that it's still running and still has um, um, uh, actions happening in Montes de Maria. Montes de Maria, it's a community, it's a sector of Colombia region uh, where there was a lot, a lot of violence related to the uh, internal conflict of Colombia. So people were disappeared. There was a lot of um, massacres and it, it, it's a really complex uh, region. And related to that um, and related to the traditional uh, way of thinking of this region, there was a lot of violence against women. Um, so we started a project um, not not specifically with with you need you need to to build which is the methodology that I was explaining before, but strengthening the, the the abilities of young people and talking about gender equality and etc. Um, and it was people were a little bit um, yeah not really into the topic. They didn't feel that it was necessary. They didn't uh, feel close to it. Uh, but later they started to uh, come together and we brought this methodological framework to, to bring different peoples from uh, society into the conversation. And uh, so we had uh, people from, we, we always talk about five uh, sectors, which is of course, of course, public sector, private sector, academia, um, organizations, um, NGOs, and social sector. And finally, we always, always try to bring into the conversations um, um, mass media uh, or communication organizations. So we started having the conversation about a, a violence against women. And it was pretty interesting because Normally, you will have this set of options that happens as a way of uh, answering the, the questions around an issue. So you will think about public policy or a campaign. And we did uh, start a campaign, which was called That is Violence, trying to show the different ways where violence was perpetrated and uh, normalized within this community. But then uh, we were thinking, how, how do we get to the people that actually go every day and can have an impact and talk to everyone? And, you know, and then uh, as we were all talking together and um, like this, um, like, how do you say this? Like uh, the intelligence of everyone coming together uh, was really, really interesting. And you can move to the other slide because people thought about mototaxistas. Mototaxistas are the drivers in this community. There are not a lot of cars. Everyone moves around in, in motos, in motorcycles, which are called mototaxis. And they will move people around. So we gather all of the mototaxistas uh, from this region and we uh, did uh, different sessions of them to understand what really uh, violence against women is, how the behaviors of different men specifically uh, can impact the security or the, the, the relationship of women with the public spaces, et cetera. And they became um, advo ad advo advocates of this campaign. Um, they were identified so women will feel more safe taking a taxi with a man who was part of the project. Um, and this wouldn't have happened if everyone from different sectors were in this conversation trying to understand the problem from this uh, different point of view and having a better understanding of the problem and um, really thinking outside of the box. So this is the example that we wanted to share with you all. And thank you so much.
Thank you, Juanita. And we only have three more minutes left. So thank you all for your participation, your presence, for your listening. I'm going to pass over to Debbie and Komi to close that down. Thanks, uh, three speakers. Thank Luzette, Vishan, and Juanita. Thanks, everybody, for joining our Moving System Change uh, session. So uh, I, we hope that you got a lot of great insights after today's session. For the next one, uh, we will talk about the foundation of impact theory of change and logic models. But before that, please help us to spend one to two minutes. Tell us how this session was about for you. And also, we would like to share that in next Monday, we will have a story from the field. We launched uh, four books from our members from uh, Dara Institute Homeless World Cup and Jackson from uh, World Toilet Foundation. So Ira will drop in the chat the link to join this session. And we would like to share the social change innovator, a wealth of knowledge created by and for social innovators around the world. Also, uh, Catalyst Medium Patch show, showcase work of social innovators around the world. And we would like to call for your papers to contribute to this uh, highly growing patch, the platform. And finally, if you are not, if you haven't been a member of Catalyst, feel free to join us. Uh, before we leave, as a tradition of our Catalyst team, how about uh, turn on your camera and put yourself and say thank you in our mother language. Grazie, everyone. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.